Hi friends, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't seen my previous video, my May wrap up, in that video I mentioned links to support Black Lives Matter, educating yourselves. I will leave all of those resources in the description box once again. Racism isn't going to go away in a week. We should be committing to the lifelong endeavor of learning how to be anti-racist. With that in mind, June is a busy month. It's Pride Month and it's Indigenous History Month in Canada. So there are two books this month that have set deadlines. The first one is The Passion by Jeanette Winterson. I don't know if a nipple on the cover of a book will upset YouTube. My In Real Life book club is uh, has read in the past Written on the Body by Jeanette Winterson and loved it. Highly recommend Written on the Body if you haven't read it. If you haven't read any Winterson, her work is phenomenal, and I'm really excited to delve into another one of her works. To be honest, I don't really know what it's about, I don't really care, but apparently it's considered by many to be one of Jeanette Winterson's finest works. So, oh, titty. Um, so, The Passion. I have to have this read by June 14th. It is June 10th today. The next book that I have to read this month, this is due June 26th, uh, and that is The Fireman by Joe Hill. So this is a book that I am reading with the Red Rum Book Club. It's a patron exclusive book club. We are going to tackle this piece of fantasy over the top apocalyptic fiction about a plague called the Dragon Scale that causes people to break out in this um, golden black scaly rash before bursting into flames. So I gotta have that read for June 26th for the live show. In continuing to learn and educate myself, I would like to finish reading The Hanging of Angelique by Afua Cooper, which is about the history of slavery in Canada. Yes, we did have slavery and we did a really good job of erasing it from our history and building this narrative that Canada was this like last stop on the Underground Railroad and a place of freedom and a place of enlightenment and love and happiness and rainbows like that girl from Mean Girls who doesn't even go here. I wish that I could bake a cake made out of rainbows and smiles and we'd all eat be happy. And that narrative sucks. So I need to do better. I need to educate myself on the history of racism and slavery in my own country and this is something that I would like to finish. The other book that I want to read is Dion Brand's Bread Out of Stone. So Dion Brand is, an, is a Canadian author, obviously. I love What We All Long For by Dion Brand, and I have gifted that book to many people in real life, and they love it as well. It is fiction with a few different points of view of young people of color living in Toronto. I think a couple of them are queer. So a great read for like this moment where we are trying to amplify black voices but also queer voices during Pride Month. Bonus recommendation for watching my TBR, you're welcome. Uh, so these are looking into the history of sex, sexism, and sexual autonomy, politics, community, and the centrality of whiteness in Canadian culture, diaspora and immigration, violence and stereotypes, racial imagination, and music, art, literature, and freedom. And so I think this will be a really important read and I would like to get to this as soon as possible as well. For Indigenous History Month, Indigenous History, I would like to continue to work my way through the final report, Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada, Volume 1, The Summary. So this is looking at the history of residential school systems, the genocide of Indigenous folks in Canada by white colonialists. Canada has a history of racism. Canada also enslaved Indigenous people. We need to learn about this. As a white settler Canadian, I need to learn about this. Um, I also want to read The Break by Katharina Vermetta. This book I hauled because one of my managers at the time read it and uh, because it was 40% off. That's why I hauled it. Which is a really shitty reason to haul a book. This is about a Métis woman. It is a series of shifting narratives, people who are connected with violence, police, family, and friends, and they're telling their personal stories leading up to the fateful night where um, a crime has occurred. The last book I have here I put in my like 
program notes for women and horror in March. This is Taktumi. This is an anthology of Arctic horror stories. So again, we have indigenous voices in here telling horror stories. And I would also like to finally finish Refuse, Canlet and Ruins, edited by Hannah McGregor, Julie Rack, and Aaron Wonker. Canlet has come under fire recently. It's a microcosm of the whole, naturally. Um, and so this is a collection of works that looks to refuse and to look at the refuse of Canlet. If I'm thinking about the way that Black, Indigenous, and people of color have been treated in Canadian history and are treated now, uh, I need to also look at criticism of the can lit, the body of lit that is being produced in the country that I live. So Jeanette Winterson is queer, so the passion works. <laughs> I also want to read The Remedy. So this is a uh, collection of queer and trans voices on health and healthcare, and it was edited by Zena Sharman. So this my best friend recommended um, because she is in healthcare, and it's on my TBR because the two of us are going to be looking at health in the Harry Potter series as part of Lumos. I will be addressing JK Rowling and her transphobic bullshit in an upcoming video. Continuing on with that, um, that thought about trans voices, trans issues. I picked up a long time ago, No Place to Go, How Public Toilets Fail Our Private Needs by Leslie Lowe. So this isn't specifically about uh, the trans experience in public washrooms. This is about how public bathrooms just don't work. Like for the homeless who faced with no place to go, sometimes must literally take to the streets. For people with invisible disabilities, such as Crohn's disease, who stay at home rather than risk soiling themselves on public transit. For girls who quit sports teams because they don't want to run to the edge of the pitch to pee. Bathroom bills that will stomp on the rights of trans people dominate the news. This book peels back the layers on public bathrooms and it's clear many more people want for good access than have it. I mean, it's been on my TBR for a while. I think it dialogues nicely with a lot of the topics that are in circulation with my TBR this month. I'm going to school in September and I'm supposed to be pre-filming evergreen content. It's not going well, if you're wondering. Uh, one of those things that I am working on as evergreen content is a series called Judge a Book by Its Cover, in which I pick up books that I think have ugly covers but have plots that intrigue me. A book cover is a marketing tactic. A book cover is a manipulation of you as a reader, of you as a consumer, before you even pick up the book. The book has to speak to you, it has to draw your eye. And so Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng is a cover that I find aesthetically unappealing. It is not a book that I would ever cover by. I think composition-wise, it's unattractive. I think the fluorescent orange spine in contrast to the cool tones of the cover is unattractive. I think there's just a jumble of shit happening on the cover with like the the suburb and the streets and the text. It's a mess and it turns me off. However, the story excites me. This is the story of this little suburb where it's all about playing by the rules, conformity, and then Mia Warren, an enigmatic artist and single mother, arrives in this idyllic bubble with her teenage daughter Pearl and a disregard for the status quo that threatens to upend this carefully ordered community. Just like smashing order, single mothers, story about women, I like I'm here for the ideas but I hate the cover, and so I, I want to read this in an effort to pre-film for September when I will inevitably have less time. The last thing that I really do need to read, <sighs> even though I, <sighs> I love Harry Potter, I love the conversations that the series opens, I love that this is a series about love, about diversity, about standing up against racists. Voldemort is a white supremacist. He is a person obsessed with blood purity and exterminating those who do not have pure wizard blood. This is a book series that is bigger than the dumpster fire of a human that 
Rowling has revealed herself to be. I hope that I am communicating that through my work on Lumos. If I haven't been clear about that in the past, I am definitely going to work on making that clear in the future episodes. And so I do have to read Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix for Lumos as I continue to work on this series. I do intend to finish this series, continue my work on this series. So I'm sitting in front of my unread bookshelf. I have my unread books by black authors. Also behind me, let's scooch even further. I said I wasn't gonna buy any more books and yet these are the books that I have purchased in 2020. I really want to make an effort to reduce this TBR. I have a video planned to talk about tackling this TBR, new strategies for doing this, that still gamifies the TBR, but doesn't reduce marginalized voices to a single month. Something that I've been thinking a lot about with the Black Lives Matter movement and listening to the voices of Black booktubers is the ways in which I have behaved in the past. I took like February Black History Month to read only Black authors. That sort of petered out um, because the next month was International Women's Day and so I spent the month reading women. In gamifying my TBR I have been I guess blocking out times of the year where it is trendy to amplify voices at that time. I have been trying to think about how to tackle this in a way that doesn't gamify identity if that makes sense. If you have any questions for me about what I will be doing to tackle this TBR, how I want to tackle this TBR, leave them in the comments down below. I will try and incorporate any questions about the TBR into that video. Before we go, we have to thank my patrons. Thank you patrons for supporting me, for supporting my decision to take a week off of producing content and educate myself. Please check out the links to resources in the description box down below. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.